Hey everyone, how's it going? Tony D with another screenwriting tips video. Today we're talking about how to write a zombie movie. Oh, zombie movies, how I love you. Um, I've written at least two and a bunch of other zombie stories. So I thought a lot about the subject. I watch zombie movies all the time. I love to watch ones from different countries. I love to... Uh, Wanted a Dead, Cuban zombie movie, really good. Uh, more recent one, Train to Busan. I think it's still on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, another good one. That's a Korean zombie movie. Oh, there's just so many and there's just so much fun. But if you're gonna write a zombie movie, you gotta know your stuff. And um, the first thing you need to do is figure out how the zombies are made. In your zombie movie, the physics of your zombies are very important. So there's all sorts of variations on what kind of zombies you can have, right? So you've got the zombies, Night of Living Dead zombies, they come back uh, to life because of the Venus probe. And uh, the implication at the time, it's some kind of radiation that animates the zombies. We don't really know, but that's the basic uh, uh, thrust of the, the zombies in Night of the Living Dead. Uh, later you get, uh, you know, in the 80s there was uh, one of my favorite zombie movies, Return of the Living Dead. Uh, it's got a lot of zombies in it, it's got a lot of punk rockers in it, and uh, in that the deal was the government had created a chemical to try to wipe out marijuana, but there was a side effect that they turned certain people into zombies. And um, the first one is this uh, is 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 in this container that's accidentally delivered to these guys, and they open up the container, and two of the guys get sprayed with the uh, chemical, and it turns them into zombies. And then the the actual there's an actual zombie in the container too, and he gets out and he starts biting people, and it. It just goes downhill from there. Um, the strength of your zombies is very important, right? So in Return of the Living Dead, the zombies were really tough to kill. They had a real problem killing any zombie. They couldn't just uh, kill it in the head, uh, which they tried to do in the movie. Uh, in, in, uh, in that movie, what happens is they, a cadaver, which is in the warehouse, <laughs> comes back to life, gets sprayed with some of the chemical and uh, they try to kill it and uh, they put a pickaxe through its head and it still keeps moving around. So they cut off its arms and legs and then the arms and legs move around. So it's really difficult. They end up in a crematorium throwing the zombies in there, but uh, it's like nearly impossible to kill them. And in that movie too, those zombies had an evil intelligence about them. There, That's the movie where uh, there's a, a great scene where um, a bunch of cops have been killed already and the zombie cops now uh, pick up the radio and say to the dispatcher, send more cops. And that's how they keep getting the cops to come and keep getting more victims to eat. Oh, and, the, and in that movie too, they only ate brains. And they established in that movie that uh, brains, eating the brains, made the pain of being dead go away for the zombies. So, uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in that movie. The sequels were not nearly as good. Uh, we learned so much in that first movie and then the sequels kind of really dropped the ball, but um, I did like that in the sequels they brought back the original cast and they all played different characters. Uh, because, as you know, in a zombie movie with punk rockers, everyone's gonna die. Um, and usually a lot of people die in zombie movies anyway, so it's no surprise, right? And then you got, you know, The Walking Dead and uh, the TV show, and I got a lot of problems with that show. I'd have to make like 10 videos to tell you all that, but the basic uh, zombie physics in The Walking Dead is that everyone has, you know, the virus in them already to be The Walking Dead it's just that you have to be dead in order for it to kick in and start making you move around. Which means that in The Walking Dead, anyone who dies turns into a zombie, you know, after after a little while. So, uh, and you can also be bit in that one too. 
biting usually is an issue depending in uh, you know in some of these movies you got to be dead but in others you just got to be bitten and once you get bit it's just you know the clock is ticking and then you get the disease that's the way it was in Train to Busan you you'd actually start to see your veins get all weird it was pretty intense it's definitely one to see Train to Busan um, you can choose the tone of course in a zombie movie uh, you definitely have elements of horror there it's hard to completely dismiss the elements of horror obviously because it's dead bodies walking around but since horror and comedy are kind of close, uh, a lot of times zombie movies are funny, or they at least, you know, intentionally or unintentionally. <laughs> um, Night of the Living Dead is more of a drama, uh, more of a little play, a little, little uh, about uh, the characters trapped in this weird, weird thing where people are dying. Um, but you know that the balance that. George Romero created with that first movie, you know, it's really hard to create. I mean, he really did something with that movie, which is why it's so iconic. Um, even in Day of, uh, Dawn of the Dead, and even in some ways Day of the Dead, he, he did cool stuff too. Uh, Dawn of the Dead was a, at least the first version of it, not the remake, was, uh, you know, a statement about consumerism because all the zombies were in a mall and um, you also have to determine whether you're going to have the shambling zombies which I prefer personally I like love the classic slow moving zombies I think the running zombies are stupid for a lot of reasons number one is they're dead um, their muscles shouldn't work that well and coordinated they should be falling down a lot and uh, I think it's much creepier to have the zombies quietly sneak up on you and that you overestimate your own abilities and that's how you get, you know, killed. Uh, I'm waiting for a video game that really captures that. And, you know, there's been ones that have been close, but I never quite get it. Like, I don't like, you know, I love Left 4 Dead, but I, I, I really would love the game a lot more if there were no special zombies. If all the zombies were exactly the same and they were all shambling. The, the closest one, kind of, uh, for, for a lot of the game is Dead Island because there are, although there are a few later in the game, there are a few special zombies. For the first half of the game, the only special zombies are the guys who are a little bigger than normal, which I, which I can forgive. Uh, they're almost the same as regular zombies. They're just slightly bigger and slightly more powerful. But I would prefer uh, a game where all the zombies were just like they were in The Walking Dead. Maybe I gotta play The Walking Dead games, I don't know. I have so many problems with the show, it, it's kind of a turnoff, but... All right, getting back to writing your zombie movie, the first act. Well, it depends on what kind of zombie movie you're making. Whether you're making a, you know, zombie movie showing people how the zombies showed up, or if you're making the post-zombie apocalypse movie. Um, so if you take a movie like Zombieland, in Zombieland, um, they do it in a flashback, but basically they tell you how the zombie virus started and how uh, you know the protagonist sort of got to where they are. Then the second act is about the people they meet up with and, you know, things happen and it's kind of about their interaction, not so much the zombies. Although the zombies are a big factor in it. And then the third act, they kind of all come together and realize they need to stick together and not sort of screw each other over. Um, there's a lot of that in zombie movies. I kind of get it to some extent from a dramatic standpoint. From a pragmatic standpoint, I find it hard to believe that you know, when the zombies come, people will still bother to grift each other. <laughs> I mean, really, when you think about it, there's going to be so much food left behind in cans and various containers all over the world. Uh, cars and resources and guns. I, I find it hard to believe that the zombies would even be that much of a threat. But 
that's one of the challenges in doing a zombie movie. How do you make them a threat, especially if you do a downstream zombie movie and not one where the breakout happens? The breakout, in some ways, is a lot easier because uh, it follows a very predictable pattern. The first act is how the zombies show up. Like in Shaun of the Dead, the rollout is very slow and subtle in the background. And then, uh, you know, by the second act, the characters, Sean and his uh, buddy, realize, oh God, the zombies are here. How are we going to deal with this? And then uh, by the third act, uh, they're trapped inside the Winchester and things are just getting completely out of hand and uh, it turns into more of a drama than it does a comedy uh, in that third act because it really it really heightens it but you know in the end it's still kind of funny and light and uh, it, it manages to hold on to that romantic comedy spirit in the end in other movies, it's usually a big climax after almost everybody's dead <laughs> and a few people maybe survive. But um, it depends on how you want to go. Uh, I, I prefer zombie movies in which some people live. I, I think it's kind of too depressing. Although with um, Return of the Living Dead, uh, many spoilers ahead here, uh, the fact that everybody died was kind of okay because the way they portrayed the zombies, they were so indestructible to begin with that um, killing them all off made more sense than having anybody live. And it was kind of a kind of a nihilist uh, version of zombies. Everybody dies. Why not? Um, and in some ways, it's just it's just more realistic, right? Um, when you have a show like The Walking Dead, well. Unfortunately, there's so many problems with that show. Like I said, I'd have to do 10 videos to, to go through them all. Um, but your physics in your zombie universe need to be consistent. In the second act, in a typical zombie movie, it's about the outbreak. The outbreak gets worse and worse and worse. How are the characters going to survive? You usually start with a big team of characters so you can kill a few off along the way. And, you know, maybe one or two of them do the noble sacrifice thing. At some point, they, they, they find that moment where uh, in Train to Busan, there's, there's a real creepy version where it's not really a noble sacrifice, but man, it's, it's just creepy. It, it, it's just very creepy. Um, it, it, again, see Train to Busan, Korean zombie movie. Um, but, you know, the zombies usually represent something in the movie that will represent, they could represent pollution or climate change or, you know, they, 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 they're a metaphor for something bigger. Um, so don't just do zombies, you know, unless you have a really cool take. There was a, there was a interesting Australian zombie movie where the characters figure out that at night, or no, I'm sorry, in the daytime, the zombies uh, breathe out this gas, which is incredibly volatile. So what they end up doing is in the daytime, they hook up these zombies to like these gas masks with tubes coming out of it, which they then hook into their cars, which for some reason don't work anymore but when they um, you know hook up the zombies to them the zombies fuel the cars but only in the daytime it was it was weird it was a little bit like Mad Max meets Night of the Living Dead it was crazy um, so I mean you could do but it was you know it was interesting in, in in one of the dead which was the Cuban zombie movie it was not so much the the zombies, but how Juan continued with his life despite the fact there were zombies. <laughs> it was more about Juan, like kind of just continuing with his life because uh, he was just that sort of character. Like you knew you knew the moment you see Juan that he's going to survive the whole thing. He's just this guy who survives no matter what. Um, so whether you're, you're, you're character based or you're, or you're searching for that, 
that extra bit of zombie knowledge to 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 give the zombie fans that your your unique twist on it um you know all that stuff's important so in the second act you know more and more zombies people die and then the third act is some conclusion now sometimes it's a cure sometimes it's getting to the safe zone uh sometimes it's you know saving somebody who's trapped from the zombies um or you know sometimes everybody dies like in the classic george romero night of the living dead i mean that's a it's a great ending um uh it said a lot at the time you know and uh it, it was it was daring it was bold you you need to do something like that for your zombie movie and it's very hard it's very hard to do a zombie movie that makes sense you know a zombie movie that's going to you know not just be the typical like oh, brains you know you need something else you need what whatever it is that new element you have to put it in there um, don't just rewrite Night of the Living Dead you have to give it a drama um, you know part of the drama in Night of the Living Dead is all these people from various backgrounds are trapped in the house and it, it turns into a, a sort of a classic drama like what are we gonna do it's it's almost like a little disaster movie that's what inspired me to do this video I did the disaster movie video uh, a couple videos back and that's what a zombie movie usually is it's usually a disaster movie with zombies so instead of a volcano or an earthquake the zombies are hitting um, it's post-apocalyptic because after the zombies hit society is done as we know it um, so you know the, the, the countries lie in ruins and uh, uh, there's not going to be a government anymore and you know depending depending on how how you roll out the ending now in Shaun of the Dead basically things kind of go back to normal for the most part I mean they they just learn to live with zombies in in other movies it's no there's no going back like it's it's just a matter of time before we're all going to be wiped out or until people have to like you know move to an island far away and wait for the zombies to all die um so that's the big question if you're doing a zombie movie it's very hard it's much harder to do the zombie movies that are downstream zombie movies like what happens 28 days later 128 day, days later you know what happens 10 years later uh because the zombies should rot and you have to explain why they have it or why the disease is still around why why are new zombies being created you know after a time you would think hey people would get enough guns and get enough get enough organization they could wipe out the zombies but somehow they keep coming back right uh can't we take enough precautions can't we uh you know purify enough drinking water or whatever once the population gets low enough and and uh battle hardened enough we should be able to beat these damn zombies right so it, it's much harder to do those down the stream uh, zombie movies than it is to do oh the outbreak's coming patient zero here he is um, there's a medieval zombie movie on Netflix now called the kingdom uh, which looks fairly interesting because obviously medieval guys are gonna have swords and armor and that's gonna make it much tougher for them to be turned into zombies I mean think about it if you're wearing suits of armor I mean getting bit that's a lot harder you got swords swords is a great swords are a great weapon to fight against zombies you could hack off their heads even if they're the kind of zombies that don't die when you hack their heads off uh you hack off their head they're they're pretty incapacitated so but uh the most important thing in the zombie movie besides following the three-act structure besides having a character with a journey is you got to figure out how your zombies work and then once you do uh, it's all about those other things. It's all about the format. It's all about the character's journey. You know, something has to come out of a, this terrible experience for the protagonist. They have to learn something. They have to become a better person. You know, typically it's 
characters who have never really been in these high pressure situations and they that comes out it, it, it you know in the remake of Dawn of the Dead they had a character like that the security guard he's kind of a jerk and then later in the movie you know again noble sacrifice to uh, save his friends he becomes like a, a great hero um, you know it's that remake isn't great I mean it's pretty good I don't like running zombies I don't feel that I like the classic zombies I think they're creepier that they shamble up to you quietly and if you're not paying attention they get you as opposed to running zombies running zombies seem even more unrealistic than regular zombies you know it doesn't seem uh, to make it seems to make less sense to me that zombies could run you know to me they would fall down a lot uh, that they are dead and can't feel anything they would easily break their bones and rip, tear apart tendons as they ran and wouldn't care and that that to me would be a real problem that they don't seem to address in the running zombie movies I mean I understand zombies can lunge short distances maybe you know for short distances get at people but in Day of the Dead remake it was crazy I mean they had zombies like sprinting across parking lots to get at people and I thought that was a little too much it was scary uh, to some degree but you know the the unrealistic aspect of it kind of tuned me out of it. But, you know, I get it, running zombies. I mean, it's a different take. That's the important thing. You give us, give us a different take. Um, you have to put your own spin on this, whether it's, you know, post-apocalyptic or how it all happens, uh, which is why how the zombies are created is so important. Uh, you know, Resident Evil, they do their thing. Resident Evil is closer more to like the Evil Dead kind of zombies. There's zombies, but there's also de demons mixed in and it, it's a whole thing that isn't quite explained. When you deal with supernatural zombies though, you have a lot of, lot of uh, free reign. You can just make up the rules, whatever they are. Um, and uh, you can kind of use the supernatural element to just say, well, they're supernatural. That's that's why. <laughs> That's why all this crazy stuff happens. It's magic. It's essentially dark magic, but it's magic. Um, that that works. I, I you know to me it's a bit of a cop out. That's why I love Return of the Living Dead so much because they had this. You could hear the thinking that went behind it. They had a whole thought process of behind the zombies. They eat brains because the brain brains make the pain go away. That's a cool uh, creepy thing to put in a zombie movie. So we need something like that. And I think that's why that movie sort of, uh, you know, achieved a cult status as opposed to its sequels. So, and that's all you could really hope for with a zombie movie, I think. You know, Walking Dead kind of came out of nowhere in some respects. It was so sort of straightforward zombie stuff. Um, but, you know, with movies, uh, they're always trying to up the ante I say you want to try to up the ante if you can, but at this point, how do you up the ante with, you know, movies like, uh, uh, you know, the Brad Pitt movie with the zombies, um, uh, Z Day, it, it's, you know, it's, they've already got like piles and piles and piles of zombie CGI going on, you know, just like torrents of zombies washing over you like a, a like a tidal wave it, it's kind of like overkill at that point we've hit peak zombie in terms of the sheer numbers and power um so now you have to come up with more clever ways or more interesting ways like and there are movies that are more zombie adjacent like the crazies which was also recently remade and also another george romero movie the interesting thing about the crazies is they're not so much zombies, but they're people who have lost their minds, basically. And um, you know, it 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 allowed you it allowed the filmmakers and the storytellers to do more with the characters rather than just have them shamble in and go, "Oh, I'm going to bite you." You know, having the zombies talk gives you gives you a little flexibility there. But again, 
you have to uh, I I wrote my zombie movie the zombies could talk which was a, a bit of a bit of a twist um, if the zombies are supernatural a lot of times they can talk and that can make them very creepy especially if they're demonic you know because you could always do you know reveal horrible secrets because you know they've got access to hell or whatever so and the level of horror is up to you you can make it totally campy and crazy like Return of the Living Dead like Zombieland and Shaun of the Dead or you make it more horror driven um, like Night of the Living Dead or Day of the Dead or any of these movies where you know the zombies just come and uh, do some crazy things there's also that uh, oh god Fido is the name of the movie. Ha, I remembered. Fido is a movie that's about, uh, it's, a, it's what if the zombies hit in like the 50s and we beat the zombies in a war and then the zombies are used as manservants. They're like rigged up so they can't bite you anymore. And people use them as like butlers and stuff. <laughs> and so it's about this one zombie called Fido who ends up falling in love with this woman he works for uh, who's being treated badly by the other humans and uh, uh, so it was kind of a different take on on the whole zombie thing it's an interesting movie um, so I mean there's there's all sorts of ways to work the zombies into it there's tons of shorts online which I'm sure you've seen uh, I recommend you see some of them some of them are great there's the one where the guy saves his baby there's the one where the zombies are the good guys and uh, it's about them being hunted by the humans and trying to avoid the humans. Um, you know, there's all sorts of cool twists. Uh, so try to come up with a new twist. And again, do your research. If you're not seeing all these movies, you don't know these movies. I'm talking about all these crazy movies that have been out. Train to Busan, Wanted of the Dead, Shaun of the Dead. Night of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead. If you haven't seen half these movies, Land of the Dead, you know, you're going to end up reinventing the wheel. So get out there and see them. Uh, so you don't do that. And make something cool. Okay. That's all I have to say about zombies. I wish I could say more. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Tony D. Uh, this has been Screenwriting Tips. You can check me out on Patreon still. I'm also at the Web Comic Factory where you can see my zombie comic, uh, The Horror of Colony 6, Space Zombies, Zombies in Space, um, and of course Super Frat, my other web comic. Sorry for the beeping in the background. That's my dryer going off. I'm going to do my laundry and I will see you next time.